In 2006, a prospect named Evan Longoria was picked in the first round of the 2006 June Amateur Draft by the then Tampa Bay Devil Rays. They didn't know it at the time, but the race had just drafted their superstar. Longoria would go on to play for the Rays, Giants, and now Diamondbacks for 15 seasons and counting. In that time, he would have one of the most electrifying debuts in MLB history that would unfortunately fade into mediocrity in the coming seasons. Let's reflect on what led the Rays to trade their franchise legend, how he struggled, and how he overcame those struggles to look young again. From the very start of his baseball career, it was clear that Evan Longoria was playing the game at a higher level than all of his peers. The teenage third baseman broke out in his freshman year playing college ball at Cal State Long Beach, but followed it up with an incredible sophomore season where he slugged 602 and had an on-base percentage of 468 for an OPS of 1,070. In just 201 at-bats, Longoria hit 11 home runs and accrued 71 hits. With the exceptional stats that he had, scouts soon took notice of his skills and eventually he was drafted in the first round by the then Tampa Bay Devil Rays as the third overall pick. Longoria only spent two years in the minor leagues where the now rebranded Tampa Bay Rays decided it was time to give the kid a shot and promoted him to the big league roster at 22 years old. In his first major league outing on April 12, 2008, Longoria collected his first hit, a single to left field off of Daniel Cabrera. Just two games later, on April 14th, he blasted his first homer to deep left off of New York's Brian Bruning, the first of 27 in his illustrious 2008 campaign. The Rays were so happy with his early season performance that they hastily extended their young third baseman with a six-year, $17.5 million contract, even though Longoria had only played in six games as a professional. Evan Longoria was soon the face of a franchise, and in his rookie season he ranked as the fifth best third baseman in all of MLB by OPS+, a park-adjusted, era-adjusted stat where 100 is league average. Essentially, with an OPS plus of 127, he was 27 points better than the average big leaguer, and he used those 27 points to grab a spot on the 2008 American League All-Star squad. To add to his list of statistical success, his ISO, or isolated slugging percentage, which is a stat that measures the raw power of a hitter, placed second among third basemen at 259. Make sure you remember what ISO is, as we'll be coming back to it later. The 08 Rays were good enough that season to make their first World Series appearance in franchise history, where the magic from Longoria's rookie season completely petered out. Longoria floundered to a miserable 050 series batting average, good for just a 100 OPS. In the Rays' World Series debut, they were decimated by a powerhouse Phillies team that easily took the series 4-1. Nevertheless, Longoria's atrocious World Series performance didn't stop voters from unanimously awarding him the AL Rookie of the Year award, making him the first recipient of the award in Tampa Bay Rays history. By the end of his 2009 season, Longoria was showing off that he was a major offensive threat by crushing 33 homers, placing him at number two among third basemen. Longoria also had an excellent triple slash which shows batting average, on base percentage, and slugging percentage. While the Rays didn't see too much success in the regular season, finishing third in the AL East, Evan Longoria received more attention from award voters, as they gave him the gold glove as well as a silver slugger. Fans showed their appreciation by electing Longoria as the starting third baseman for the 2009 American League All-Star team. But just a season later in 2011, Longoria would cement himself into Tampa Bay baseball history by hitting a home run. Yes, it's that home run, the one they'll probably be playing on repeat for decades to come. To fully appreciate the weight of the moment, some context is required. You see, the Rays and Red Sox were in tight competition for the 2011 American League wildcard spot, but the Rays seemed hopelessly out of contention. Going into September, they were nine games behind the Red Sox, and most assumed the Rays wouldn't play any October baseball that year. Despite the gap, they battled back, winning enough games to tie the Red Sox going into Game 162. Facing the Yankees in what would turn into one of the best games in baseball history, the Rays powered through a 7-0 Yankee lead to tie up the game in the ninth. Naturally, Longoria was the spark plug for this team, sending off the Foghorns at Tropicana Field in the 8th with a 3-run homer. Despite his efforts, Longoria had not done enough to tie up the game, and the score sat at 6-7. In the bottom of the ninth, the Rays' struggling first baseman came up to the plate. Dan Johnson has had a rocky MLB career at this point, and he's been up and down from the minors to majors for the past few seasons, even playing in the Japanese Central League in 2009 to stay in pro baseball. The Rays themselves had barely kept him on the roster, recalling him after designating him for assignment. With the game seemingly over, Dan Johnson did this. Johnson hits it down the right field line! That ball's gonna be fair! And gone! Johnson had just allowed for the Rays to play at least one more inning in 2011. 
the Yankees and Rays would play deadlock baseball until the time and the inning count moved to 12. Fans still left in the stadium who had been watching Boston score would know that the Orioles had overcome the odds to achieve a walk-off win against the Sox. If the Rays could score just one more run this inning, they'd have another shot at making a deep playoff run. If you don't know who the hero is here, then I'm sure you can guess who it is. Do two and a line shot down the left field line. That ball, it's gone! And the Rays win it! A line drive home run by Evan Longoria. And the Rays storm the field. The Rays had just done the impossible to defeat the Yankees and had cultivated an event so iconic that Tropicana Field has a group of seats called 162 Landing, where Longoria's home run ball landed. So what did the Rays do with their newfound life, their second chance? They got absolutely owned by the Rangers in the ALDS, losing the series 3-1. to one. That's the Tampa Bay Rays for you. Even after losing the ALCS, Longoria was still a hero and had become the Rays' most beloved player since the franchise's inception in 1998. Since fans kind of like this guy, he was extended with a 10-year, $100 million contract in the offseason of 2012. Longoria loved the Rays and cared greatly about their success, and when interviewed about his contract negotiations, he said, We kind of tried to find a middle ground to where we would be able to do some things to be able to afford some players and put ourselves in a position to win every year. And I told them from the beginning that I didn't want to be the one sucking up all the payroll so we couldn't afford anyone else. Look, it would have been easy for Longoria to negotiate for more money, and as the franchise icon, he had all the leverage in the world. But that's not the guy Evan Longoria is. He's a team player through and through who's always wanting to push his team towards a championship. Longoria was not only valuable to the Rays, but he was valuable overall according to our war. But what is our war? Just by itself, war stands for wins above replacement, and it's a statistic that can be used to understand the value of a player by measuring how many more wins he's worth over another replacement level player at his position. The lowercase r simply denotes that this calculation of war comes from baseball reference, as they calculate war differently than other databases like Fangraphs and Baseball Prospectus. So with that knowledge, you can appreciate that Longoria's 2008-2013 to seasons are ranked third most valuable in MLB during that time by our war, and his total of 35.5 sits just under legendary players like Miguel Cabrera and Albert Pujols. Although Longoria played all of the 162 game schedule in 2014, he faced some statistical fallback from his earlier godlike form. First, his walk rate dropped to below 10% for the first time since his rookie season. Second, he only slugged 404, which was 35th out of third baseman in the league. Finally, and most concerningly, his ISO bottomed out at 151. Longoria just wasn't as much of a threat as he used to be, compared to a few years ago where he was one of the most feared sluggers in the American League. Longoria's struggles continued into the 2015 season, where his ISO did improve but only slightly to 166. I mean, come on, Longoria's on-base percentage that season was lower than his teammate Brandon Geyer's, and he was a guy who got beat up by the baseball for a living. While Longoria did have offensive difficulty, he was a consistently good defender. In 2015, he had a fielding percentage of 976 and a DRS, or defensive run saved, of 9. Even so, that was a far cry from his first four seasons, where he averaged a DRS total of about 16.5. All hope wasn't lost, however, as in 2016 Longoria showed a flash of his old form from years previous. He surged back to hit 36 home runs, along with his slugging ascending above 500 for the first time in three seasons. Also encouraging was his ISO coming in at 248, a number he hadn't gotten close to since the start of his career. The Tampa Bay Rays, however, did not surge back and finished the year with a losing record for the third season in a row. 2016 was seemingly just a flash in the pan though, and therefore 2017 would sadly be Evan Longoria's last year as a Tampa Bay Ray. His ISO again plummeted to 163, and his OPS sat at 737. Just a few seasons ago, it seemed impossible that the Rays would ever lose Longoria, the face of their franchise, but now that was seeming more and more likely by the day. However, Longoria's defense that season did earn him the third gold glove award of his career, which was a bright spot on his less than excellent season. The hard truth that the Rays had to face was that their fan favorite third baseman just wasn't enough anymore, never mind the fact that the Rays were looking for young help that would get them out of having consecutive losing seasons. Mutually, Longoria knew that he still had plenty of potential and wanted to win, and he realized that he may not be doing that in Tampa anytime soon. 
So, in the offseason of 2017, he was traded to the San Francisco Giants for most notably Christian Arroyo and Denard Spann, as well as some minor league pitchers. It was understandably a difficult goodbye for Longoria and the organization, as he meant so much to the people of Tampa and left them as the most valuable player in their franchise history. With the war totaling 51.8, he stood above any other player in race history by a long shot, with second place being Carl Crawford at 35.6. The truth, however unfortunate for the Rays, was that Longoria now belonged to the San Francisco Giants. Longoria wanted to win quickly with the Giants, a recently successful franchise, and was looking forward to a soft reboot of his career. If only it was that easy. Following his trade, many hoped to see a Longoria comeback story, the one where he returns to his early 2010s form. He responded in 2018 by putting up his worst career season by OPS Plus to date, shelling out an OPS Plus of just 91. Baseball fans pointed to Longoria as just another case of a young stud fizzling out in their 30s. With only 22 walks on the season, he simply wasn't seeing the ball at all. More bad news incoming. Remember Longoria's infallible defense from last season that won a gold glove? Well, that was at the window too, as Longoria had a stout cast out above average of negative 6. Longoria's struggles broke into the 2019 and shortened 2020 season, where he still underperformed. His team, the San Francisco Giants, who just a few years previous had built a championship dynasty, were also underperforming as they hadn't been to the postseason since 2016. When Longoria arrived to the Giants, he expected to contribute to a World Series contending team, but instead did neither of those things. Something needed to change for both the Giants and Longoria. They needed a renaissance. Renaissance. Noun. A revival or renewed interest in something. Well, the 2021 Giants certainly had a renewed interest in winning baseball games, and they set a new franchise record coming out of nowhere to win 107 games for the most wins in all of baseball. Meanwhile, Longoria was having a renaissance of his own. He was on fire going into May, a month where he had an OPS of 812 and hit 5 home runs. Best of all, his ISO finally showed its glorious old form, hitting 221. To give perspective, his ISO hadn't been that high since 2016. The reason for the revival? For one, Longoria switched his bat to a smaller, 33-inch and 33-ounce bat. Another is that the Giants were using him to absolutely destroy left-handed pitchers, as he slugged 636 against them. Longoria was riding high going into June, but the comeback season for the former Silver Slugger wouldn't come without struggle and setback. On June 5th, while attempting to field a grounder, Longoria collided with shortstop Brandon Crawford, who was unharmed but visibly upset that he wasn't able to field the ball. Longoria, on the other hand, was not unharmed and suffered a shoulder injury that would take him out until August, where he would soon again suffer a finger injury that would linger until next season. Nevertheless, he was still effective at the plate, but had cooled off from his blazing hot April and May. Luckily, he was back in time to play in the NLDS against the rival Dodgers, where he hit a pivotal home run in Game 3 that was the only run scored on both sides that game. To conclude his bounce back in 2021, Longoria had an 883 OPS with 13 homers in 81 games. Unlike 2016 though, Longoria showed that 2021 wasn't just a one-time deal, and despite only playing 89 games in 2022 due to getting finger surgery at the start of the season, he still put up good numbers, slugging 451 with an ISO at 207. Longoria also hit 14 homers in that time too, and he demonstrated to the baseball world that he wasn't washed up, but he was once again able to be an offensive contender. So there we have it. There's the history of Longoria's incredible career up to this point. I want to reiterate that even though Longoria had some tough years by his standards, throughout that time he was still an invaluable player to have on any team due to unquantifiable things like leadership ability and perseverance. As of now, he has a war total of 58.1, which ranks 5th among active players, and has played in 1,912 games, which also ranks 5th. As for RBI, he ranks 3rd among active players. So even in his lower production years, Longoria was by no means a scrub and was still able to play consistently and be a solid leader for the Rays, Giants, and now Diamondbacks. In the offseason of 2022, Longoria expressed a desire to play in Arizona. Equally, the Giants saw Longoria as somewhat of a liability due to his reduced production and slipping defensive ability. The Giants chose to buy out Longoria and he was traded to Arizona, where he's projected to have some good offensive numbers if he can stay healthy. He'll be able to slot into third base and designated hitter roles for the D-backs, and become a mentor and role model for young players in the organization like Corbin Carroll, who, like Longoria, was the Arizona Diamondbacks' number one pick in the 2019 draft. 
From a historic rookie season to multi-year struggles, Longoria has proved that continually working to achieve good form eventually pays off, and only time will tell if Longoria can use what's left in the tank to make a meteoric rise in his twilight years. Thanks for watching all.